Okay, so this is the first video looking at the subtypes of connective tissue. So the first subtype we're going to look at is something that's called connective tissue proper. So we'll write this up. Connective tissue proper. And in actual fact, connective tissue proper is broken down into two subcategories as well. And these two subcategories include connective tissue proper loose and dense. So let's have a quick look and have a quick chat about these. So let's start with connective tissue proper loose. Now remember I said in the introductory video for connective tissue that the, the primary substances that are shared amongst connective tissue is the cells, the ground substance, which makes up the majority of the extracellular matrix, and the fibers. So when we look at loose connective tissue proper, what you need to think of is a loose arrangement of fibers within the extracellular matrix. A loose arrangement of fibers and cells within the extracellular matrix. In actual fact, you could write that there is less cells and fibers and there is more ground substance. Less cells and fibres, more ground substance. So for example, if I were to draw it up, not too many cells, and the cell types in this loose connective tissue are fibroblasts. So you're not going to have many fibroblasts. So I'll just draw a couple of fibroblasts in. And not too many fibres either, so I'll draw a couple of fibres. So that's going to be collagen fiber, which we spoke about. And I'll draw some elastic fibers. And I'll draw some reticular fibers. Now, as you can see, the arrangement of the cells, the fibroblasts, and the fibers, the collagen, the elastic, and the reticular, is quite loose. So it's a loose arrangement, but you have a high quantity of the extracellular matrix, the gel that glues it all together. Okay? Now, if we compare that to dense, basically it's the opposite. So we've got loose, loose arrangement of gels and fibers inside of that gel, uh, cells and fibers inside of that gel, and the dense is going to be more cells and fibres and less ground substance which means that if you were to draw it up what you'll find is that there's a lot of cells and fibres and these cells are also fibroblasts so you're going to find a good amount of fibroblasts And you're going to find a good amount of fibres as well. So you're going to have a lot of collagen fibres. And you may have a lot of elastic fibres as well. And what you can see is that it is a far more dense type of connective tissue. Okay? Now, generally speaking, the loose connective tissue is the type of connective tissue you generally think about. The type of connective tissue you find underneath your skin, so in the subcutaneous area, or the type of connective tissue you find surrounding your organs for protection and for binding them together. Dense connective tissue is the type of connective tissue that make up tendons and ligaments. Remember, tendons hold muscles to bones and ligaments hold bones to bones. And it also is the type of connective tissue in very stretchy bits of tissue, such as the aorta, for example. But let's first focus on loose. So there's actually, as always, some further subcategorizations of loose. And we'll just very briefly talk about them. So one of which is areola. Another one of which is adipose 
which you may have heard of before. And the last one is reticula. So let me just very briefly talk about these. Areola connective tissue is that one you think about, that, that connective tissue that sits in the subcutaneous region of your skin, that sort of holds it together, holds that epidermis to the underlying connective tissue. It's the type of connective tissue that surrounds your organs and binds your organs and organ systems together. That is areola connective tissue. And again, it's part of this loose arrangement of tissue. Adipose tissue is made up of the cell type adipocytes, okay? And adipocytes are fat cells. So it's basically fatty tissue. And this fatty tissue, again, you'll find in the subcutaneous region of your skin, so underlying your epidermis, and also surrounds your organs because predominantly it provides a cushioning and it also provides energy because of the fat that's within those cells. Then you have reticular connective tissue, and reticular connective tissue is made up predominantly of these reticular fibers, and they form a framework or a meshwork that make up predominantly the immune or lymphatic organs, such as the spleen and the lymph nodes, for example. So that is the loose connective tissue. Less so cells and fibers, more ground substance with a loose arrangement, and I think of it as the packaging material of the body. So I'll, we'll write that down for simplicity's sake. The packaging material of the body. Let's now compare that to dense connective tissue. So dense connective tissue also has three subcategories as well. This includes dense regular, this includes dense irregular and it also includes elastic. So, dense regular connective tissue is made up predominantly of collagenous fibres or collagen fibres with fibroblasts and because it's dense and regular you'll find that the arrangement is sort of like when you make lasagna and you put one sheet on top of the other. So it's very dense, but it's regular because all the collagen fibers are going in the same direction. Now, this is important because, and you're gonna have some squished fibroblasts in between those collagen fibers. Dense, regular connective tissue, well, this is what makes up the tendons and ligaments. So dense, regular is tendons, which I said tendons hold muscle to bone, and ligaments, which hold bone to bone. This is regular. Irregular, again, is a high quantity of collagen fibers, but in an irregular pattern such as that that you see here for the dense image that I drew up before. The reason why these are different is because the regular for tendons and ligaments provides some sort of resistance to tension in a particular direction, only one particular direction, okay? Dense irregular, because of the irregular patterning of the collagen fibers can sustain tension under many different directions, which means that irregular connective tissue is found, found lining the ends of bones and cartilage as well, and also forms organ capsules and joint capsules. Organ and joint capsules. What about elastic? Well, this one's easy because it's predominantly elastic fibers, not collagenous fibers, and it's still dense, so it's densely packed elastic fibers. And this is because it really needs to be able to stretch and then recoil, stretch and then recoil. And this elastic, so dense elastic connective tissue is found in structures such as the aorta. 
So you know the aorta is that main artery that comes out of the left-hand side of your heart, that left ventricle, and it's under a lot of pressure from that heart. So when the heart contracts, pushing in 120 millimeters of mercury worth of pressure, that aorta distends, and then when that left ventricle relaxes, what happens is it stretches or recoils back. So you'll find elastic, dense elastic tissue at the aorta, for example. And overall, this is the first subcategory of connective tissue, which is called connective tissue proper, broken up into loose and dense, and then into its subcategories. Hopefully that helps.